You know, when you first start running, running becomes everything. Goals and, and personal records and, and how far can I go. And I'd kind of been through all that. And uh, the Lord just started changing my desire. And uh, he kind of just molded my mind a little bit to say, okay, you know, let's, let's back off of that a little bit. I enjoyed seeing people accomplish goals and helping others, so why not do this? And then along the process, you're like, wow, this is a great connection to my spiritual walk. You learn to kind of let go of yourself and say, well, I'm not so worried about what I'm doing now. I want to see these people get across the line. And the connection is in our spiritual walk, that's what our church is for, to help one another, support one another, get them through those times, say, hey, I've been here, I know how it feels, so let me help you through it. And I'd rather have that than a PR or, or something else that, that maybe you might back off of a little bit when you're doing a class, but I wouldn't trade it for anything. It's amazing to watch uh, the runners develop and to do things that they don't think they can do but at the end they realize it takes them and God to do it and putting their trust in Him to finish that. It has been such a blessing to us as a couple to be able to take the, the spiritual gifts that God has given each of us and to be able to put those to work in ministry. Um, Andy is very much um, an encourager. He has a leadership ability that he probably doesn't like to acknowledge, but he has spiritual gifts that he can also use with, along with his hobby. And I never thought that my spiritual gifts of administration, I love to, to make emails very detailed, and to lead the group um, as far as from a very um, behind the scenes kind of role and also to to use the spiritual gift of encouragement and to be able to see the marriage of those two things complementary skills that don't typically go together in um, a traditional ministry that we've been in before it has been it's really strengthened our marriage it's kept us on the same page um, it's made us think outside of the box, both of us, and um, to really, we have grown so much as Run For God. A friend of mine used to say, it's always great when your wife gets in the boat and rows with you. And I gotta say, Renee has done that in this class, and uh, this class would be a disaster if it wasn't for my wife. Uh, her communication skills, her thinking ahead, her, I mean, a lot of times she just points to me and says, this is where you need to be or this is what you need to do. And uh, so I couldn't imagine doing it without my wife. But on the other hand, you got to realize that you're doing something for Christ. And when you do something for Christ, when you do something that's totally unselfish and, and for His glory, you got to accept that there's going to be some bumps on the, along the way. And it's also taught us that, hey, this is a struggle because there might be a little spiritual warfare involved with this here. So it's helped us identify things in our life and say, wait a minute, this shouldn't be that hard. There's a problem here. This is what this is. And say, okay, we're not gonna let this bother us. We're gonna move through it and trust God to work through it. So that's helped us along the way in our marriage as well. It's, it's learning to trust Him and listen to Him. And it's just like when, when you're running, you listen to what your body's saying. And when you're doing this, it's, it's out of your power. You listen to what God's saying. And sometimes you don't know the answer, you just show up and, and let him work it out. And so it's the same thing with running. You know, you, you can only prepare so much, but when that day comes, it's all up to him. One time I, I was talking to the group about, you know, let God pull you through. You have to trust him because there comes a time when your body can't do it anymore. And after the race was over, over first class, someone come up to me in the church lobby and grabbed my arm and said, hey, I got what you were saying. I realized in the race this wasn't about me, it was about letting God do it for me and help me. And that's the big thing that sticks out in my mind. I've seen several women that um, have confided in me along the way that they have um, suffered from depression and various things. And to see those ladies come across the finish line, crossing that finish line is not only a symbolic thing. Um, as far as finishing the race, but it really is a, a very much a mental overcoming of the thing that they did not think that they could ever do and all of that that comes with it. And I've seen women that 
literally are, are much older that are um, different body styles that have come across that finish line and you know that that is the largest thing that they have ever accomplished. You have these runners in this group that start this class and they and they, they see it, they drink the Kool-Aid so to speak and they become runners and they want others to feel that as well. So they step up the plate, you don't have to really ask them. They come to you and say, I want to help. This is a great program. And that makes your Run for God class even more fun because it's not about Renee and I in a Run for God class. It's about, hey, let's do this Run for God class. And there's so many people involved and so many people enjoying the journey with you. And it makes it more fun and easier to do.